We'll call this meeting the Upshur County Commission order. We'll begin with a moment of silent meditation, followed by Pledge of Allegiance and prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Discussion, action, and approval. I'm sorry, we have minutes, yes. Approval and minutes of Tony. <laughs> Just anxious to get the meeting on board. Thank you, Tony. The County Commission of Upshur County, West Virginia, held a special meeting at the Courthouse Annex on Friday, November 14, 2014, at 3 p.m. J.C. Rafferty called the meeting to order. There were present J.C. Rafferty, Commissioner Donnie Tenney, Commissioner Troy Brady, Commissioner. And Carrie Wallace, County, Assistant County Administrator. The meeting began with a moment of silent meditation and prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. All motions passed unanimously unless otherwise stated. A motion by J.C. Rafferty, seconded by Donnie Tenney, the Commission certified the 2014 general election results. A motion by Troy Brady, seconded by Donnie Tenney, the Commission adjourned at 3.07 p.m. Is there a motion to approve the minutes as read? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed to sign, motion carries. The County Commission of Upshur County, West Virginia, held a special meeting at the Courthouse Annex on Friday, November 14, 2014, at 4.15 p.m. J.C. Rafferty called the meeting to order. There were present J.C. Rafferty Commissioner, Donnie Tenney Commissioner, Troy Brady Commissioner, and Carrie Wallace, Assistant County Administrator. The meeting began with a moment of silent meditation and prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. All motions passed unanimously, unless otherwise stated. J.C. Rafferty announced the vacancy of the prosecuting attorney effective December 1st, 2014. Sealed resumes and interest letters are to be delivered or mailed to the Upshur County Commission, care of Carrie Wallace, and postmarked on or before November 26, 2014. Applicants must be registered Republicans as per West Virginia State Code Section 3-10-8. Interviews will be held the first week of December and an appointment will be made during the commission meeting on December 11, 2014. An interim will be appointed in the commission meeting on November 20th, 2014. A motion by Donnie Tenney, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the commission adjourned at 4.25 p.m. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? <coughs> so moved. Second. Favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same side. Motion carries. The County Commission of Upshur County, West Virginia, held a regular meeting at the courthouse annex on Thursday, November 20th, 2014, at 9 a.m. J.C. Rafferty called the meeting to order. There were present J.C. Rafferty, Commissioner, Donnie Tenney, Commissioner, Terry Jo Bennett, and Jacqueline D. Walker, Secretary. The meeting began with a moment of silent meditation and prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. All motions passed unanimously unless otherwise stated. After reading other minutes on motion by Donnie Tenney, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the Commission approved the regular meeting minutes of November 13, 2014, as submitted. Nancy Burgess, Lewis Upshur Animal Control Facility Volunteer, here before the commission to discuss the proposed dismissal of UL, LUAFHCF volunteers. The Lewis County Commission has requested the Upshur County Commission to take action to dismiss the volunteer services of Krista Atkins, Nicole English, Brenda Lee, and Desiree Colvin. Ms. Burgess requested that the volunteers be given an opportunity to resolve the conflict due to the passionate nature of the issues, extenuating circumstances, and inconsistencies of reported allegations. Donnie Tenney advised that since the proposal for dismissal is at Lewis County's request, the volunteers should appear before the Lewis County Commission. After discussion on motion by Donnie Tenney, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the Commission approved to place volunteers on suspension contingent on their appearance before the Lewis County Commission in order to resolve the conflict. Action for dismissal may follow depending on the outcome of that meeting. The Commission recessed at 10.40 a.m. Commission reconvened at 10.50 a.m. After discussion on motion by Donnie Tenney, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the Commission approved the adoption of the James 
W. Curry Li Public Library Library Operations Manual. After discussion on motion by Donnie Tenney, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the Commission approved and authorized the President to sign and send correspondence to Ratliff and Ratliff Insurance Agency concerning assistance to Upshur County retirees and employees considering retirement. <coughs> After discussion on motion by Donnie Tenney, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the Commission approved the advancement of Ashley McMillan to full-time telecommunicator status at her current $10 per hour pay rate as recommended by Steve Linger, E911 Communications Center Director. Ms. McMillan has completed training requirements. Janella Cochran, Lewis Upshur Animal Control Facility Director, appeared before the commission to request the dismissal of volunteer Brenda Lee. Ms. Cochran advised that there have been several incidents concerning unprofessional and confrontational behavior with the facility personnel and visitors by Ms. Lee one of which was witnessed by Greg Harris, Upshur County Director of Facility Operations. Ms. Lee asked, where is the witness? It stated that the allegation was just hearsay. J.C. Graffy advised that Mr. Harris would be requested to appear and moved on to the next agenda item. After discussion on motion by Donnie Tenney, seconded by J.C. Graffy, the Commission approved the following as volunteers for the Lewis Upshur Animal Control Facility. Justin Dines, Aaron Bugby, Connor Nichols, and Matthew Ferris. After discussion on motion by Donnie Tenney, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the Commission approved David Godwin as Interim Prosecuting Attorney, effective December 1, 2014. The interim appointment can last no longer than 30 days per West Virginia Code, Section 3-10-8. The Commission will be conducting interviews for Prosecuting Attorney position Monday, December 1st through Friday, December 5th, 2014. After discussion on motion by Donnie Tenney, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the Commission approved and authorized the Commission to sign correspondence to Progressive Bank, which authorizes Kelly Cunningham, County Administrator, and Barry Wallace, Assistant County Administrator, to have access to financial reports and data concerning all Upshur County Commission accounts. J.C. Rafferty reviewed the following for your information items. Invitation from Chapman Technical Group to their 30th anniversary celebration on Thursday, December 4, 2014, 2 to 7 p.m. in St. Albans, West Virginia. Correspondence from Elkins Road Public Service District appointing Larry J. Peter to the Source Water Protection Committee. Correspondence from West Virginia Department of Revenue State Tax Department certifying that Helen Phillips, assessor, has complied with the additional duties and is entitled to an additional compensation of $15,000 per West Virginia State Code, Section 7-7-6B. Correspondence from West Virginia Department of Transportation Division of Highways providing a review and comment period for the State Transportation Improvement Program for federal fiscal years 2014-2019, which includes the resurfacing of the Alexander Road. Upshur County Cat Report, October 2014. Agendas or notices of meetings as listed, meeting minutes and or financial reports as listed, meetings as listed, appointments needed or upcoming as listed. Greg Harris appeared before the commission as a witness to an incident between Brenda Lee and John Snyder, Lewis County's animal control officer. Mr. Harris requested to meet in an executive session to review his statement. Ms. Lee declined and stated that she preferred to continue an open session. Mr. Harris advised that he had witnessed a confrontational incident between Ms. Lee and John Snyder and he reported the incident to Jan Cochran. Ms. Cochran advised that the previous that previous disciplinary action has been taken with Ms. Lee, including a verbal warning and a written warning. Ms. Lee defended her actions. After discussion on motion by Don Tenney, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the commission approved Ms. Lee's dismissal due to unprofessional and confrontational behavior and not following policies and procedures as outlined in the volunteer policy, which volunteers must sign prior to providing any services. The commission approved all invoices for payment the Commission approved all vacation orders. The Commission approved the following settlements as listed. The commissioner, Commission approved the following exonerations and the refunds as listed. Terry Jo Bennett reviewed a request from Jan Cochran, LUACF Director, concerning adopter noncompliance with the LUACF pet adoption agreement. Ms. Cochran advised that many adopters have not complied with this with spay neuter as stated in the agreement and would like to follow up with John Slaughter, animal control officer, to issue tickets to offenders. Fines for noncompliance are up to $250 plus court costs. Donnie Tenney and J.C. Rafferty advise commission action is not needed. 
as the policy agreement was already approved and that the policy should be followed as written and to go ahead with ticketing. Terry Jo Bennett, addressing and mapping coordinator, appeared before the commission and provided a review of a road name request. After discussion on motion by Donnie Tenney, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the commission approved Wrong Turn Road for the private driveway off of Carter Road per E911 addressing and mapping ordinance guidelines. With no further business on motion by Donnie Tenney, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the commission adjourned at 11.50 p.m. Thank you, John. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes this today? If not, I would request a motion to approve the minutes. Seven. I'll second it since I was there. All in favor say aye. 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 On the same sign, motion to approve. Mr. Brady, may we have a session? Okay, that's a good meeting. Okay. It's now 9.16. We have one minute over, so we now have... <coughs> Nicole English to appear before the uh, uh, commission. Thank you. Are these three copies or just one copy? Uh, it's just one copy. <coughs> okay. uh, thank you for allowing me to speak today. My name is Nicole English. I'm a resident and registered voter of Upshur County, as well as co-founder of Love for Animals an organization whose goal is to help the animals of Lewis Upshur Animal Control through networking, sponsoring spay neuter, providing medical care, transport, and foster care, as well as volunteering at the shelter. I would like to address the initial request for and subsequent dismissal of myself as a volunteer from the Lewis Upshur Animal Control Facility of the Lewis County Commission. It was stated in a letter sent to Upshur County Commission by the Lewis County Commission that I publicly posted abusive remarks and untruths. I have provided to you every post and comment that I made publicly via social media. I've highlighted all the comments I personally made. I think in your review that you will find I posted no untruths and I do not feel that anything I posted was abusive. The photo that I posted I would also like to point out was publicly posted by the shelter on their Facebook page as his initial intake photo prior to him being adopted. I have also included a copy of the one and only correspondence I had with a Lewis County official, prosecuting attorney Leanne Hawkins, which I also think you will find to be non-abusive. I would like to say here to you today, as I have also posted publicly on social media, that I am ashamed at how some chose to handle this situation. I, along with others, reached out for support, but I did not encourage, nor would I ever encourage or support some of the extreme behavior that was stated to have occurred by the Lewis County Commission. Animal welfare is a very passionate topic. However, there are those who are passionate and advocate and speak out with a more appropriate conviction, and then there are those who are extremists, which while trying to accomplish the same goal, only end up being a detriment to the cause. I personally apologize to those who found themselves to be subjected to the extreme behavior. This personally was not my intention when I reached out for help. <coughs> While I do not condone such behavior, I also should not be held liable or responsible or punished for the actions of others. I am accountable for my actions alone. Shelter policy states, don't involve yourself in any decisions to euthanize an animal and do not openly question, criticize, or post on any social media website the decisions made by the staff of the facility to perform euthanasia on an animal. As this policy reads, I am not in violation via my post on social media as it was not the decision of shelter staff that was being questioned, but the decision of the PA and Lewis County Commission who are not shelter staff. I have provided to you a copy of an email correspondence with Jim Cochran, shelter manager. I have requested documentation of any verbal or written warnings I had received. She replied that she had no such documentation, but did recall that on October 16, 2013, the Lewis County Animal Control Officer, John Snyder, had given me a verbal warning <coughs> and my son with me at the shelter while I was volunteering. She goes on to state that she did not request my dismissal as a volunteer. I would like to point out that according to the shelter manager, I have only received a verbal warning over a year ago prior to this incident and have complied to this warning since having received it. I have also provided you with a printout of all of the dog statistics posted by shelter staff on their Facebook page. 
According to their postings, 27 dogs were put down at the shelter from December 2013 until October 2014. For seven months out of 11, there were zero dogs put down. Only nine of the 27 dogs were available to the public for either rescue or adoption. The remaining 18 were either owner requests or quarantine court cases. I did post publicly about Rogan without long consideration prior to. He had been adopted from our shelter. I knew him personally and I felt a sense of accountability for what happened to him because he was in our care. He was failed so many times, from him being abandoned by his owners the first time he came in, to being adopted to the first person to pay a fee without any kind of screening process to protect him or the adopters, to then being irresponsibly rehomed by the adopters without being neutered and without proper screening for the new placement, and then ending it back up in the shelter under quarantine for biting and still not having been neutered. Details of the alleged bites were not released, which is one of the reasons I was fighting so hard for him. Lewis County policy deems every dog vicious that bites, no matter what the circumstance behind the bite. And when the dog is surrendered to animal control, it is automatically placed in quarantine to be put down. They never met Rogan, didn't see his non-aggressive demeanor while in the shelter on both occasions. He had rescue willing to take him, assume all liability for him, and provide him with proper assessment, training, and responsible placement. And even Jan voiced to me that she did not think that he needed to be put down. But I understood that it wasn't her decision to make, which is why I reached out to the PA, who Lewis County Commission has stated several times is responsible for the policy <coughs> Lewis County has in place. I am so grateful that Upshur County does not have nor plans to instate such a policy here in our community. While I am an animal advocate, I understand that there are cases where animals are past the point of rehabilitation and cannot be safely kept alive, but this was not the case with Brogan. This is not a job for me, but rather a passion of mine. Much like fishing, hunting, golfing, or knitting may be a favorite pastime or hobby of others, spending time with the shelter animals is mine. I donate my time and money, as well as jeopardizing my mental and physical well-being, all in the effort to give the animals at Lewis Upshur Animal Control a fighting chance. And if they don't make it out, at least I know they knew some kind of love and compassion in the time I spent with them. I do it because I want to, not because I'm being paid to do it or for the sake of any recognition in doing it. I just genuinely love animals. The only losers in this entire ordeal are the animals, and that is what hurts the most. Despite what decision is made here today, whether or not to uphold Lewis County's ruling of dismissing me as a volunteer, I appreciate you taking the time to hear what I have to say. And at this time, I would like to request at your convenience an executive session to discuss further um, concerns I have about the shelter. Thank you, Ms. Uh, we we'll currently <coughs> see the results of the hearing at the commission hearing in Lewis County. At this point, right, so we will defer an action on their request until we get an update from them as to what their uh, decision. I understand there was a meeting and representatives from uh, did attend. So uh, we will defer having a vote today until we get some written response from Lewis County giving us an update on their decision, whether or not they changed uh, their mind or whether or not they uh, further request uh, action on their original request. I would like to point out that um at the meeting on Monday, um, I had, hadn't yet received an email from Jan as far as the documentation of any verbal or written warnings that I've had. Um, so I didn't, you know, until she gave me the email, I now know that I've had the one verbal, that's it. And over a year ago, that verbal occurred. Um, I would hope that at some point those can kind of roll off and you can kind of have a clean slate since it's been over a year. Um, but John Snyder commented during the meeting um, that I've had several write-ups to the Lewis County Commission, which obviously by Jan's email, that was false information that he provided to them. And I'm concerned that they made their judgment in part based on his um, comment that I've been written up several times. You may want to contact their administrator to make that <coughs> known if you already have one. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, moving on as we come to the items of discussion. First item for discussion will be resignation of Jacob E. Reed, your prosecuting attorney, effective November 30, 2014. I move. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 
Next, we have the resignation of Hartzell Co. Groundskeeper, effective December 8, 2014. Is there a motion to accept that? Resignation? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All the same sign, motion to carry. The next resignation of Eric Sterling, even though I'm going to tell you, he came here back to November 26, 2014. Is there a motion to accept that resignation? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Same sign, motion to carry. Next, a change in employment status for Jacqueline Dinklocker from full-time deputy clerk to part-time deputy clerk, working 20 hours per week, effective December 1, 2014. Is there a motion to accept that? So moved. All in favor say aye. Aye. No same sign, motion carries. Next, expiration of temporary employment status of Karen Simmons, part-time temporary tax deputy, effective November 21, 2014. Is there a motion to accept that? So all in favor say aye. Here's our second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> motion carries. Next, advancement of Henry T. McDonald to full time telecommunicator status at its current rate of pay of $10 per hour. Is there a motion to uh, approve? So moved. Thank you. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next, we have employment of Stephanie and Jack as full time telecommunicator. Effective December 8, 2014, at the rate of $10 per hour. Is there a motion to approve that? Uh, so moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next, we have employment of Roy R. Chapman Jr. as full time telecommunicator. Effective December 8, 2014, at the rate of $10 per hour. Is there a motion to approve that? Uh, so moved. Second. In favor say aye. Aye. All opposed. <laughs> Had some of drink, I drink it right now. Uh, motion carries. Okay, next we have the change in project director for portable siren grant 12 SHS 13 from Andrew Nelson to Jim Ferry, awesome Office of Emergency Management Director. As stated in that memo, there's been a change in the EMS uh, staff, and the current uh, director has no uh, understanding or knowledge of the history of these siren projects. So. The recommendation is that Jim Ferry, who has been familiar with that uh, project from the, from the beginning, uh, be assumed responsibility for that. So, so the there second. second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next, there are a signature of engagement letter for legal services for Shannon Smith with Kate Castro and Cheney, attorneys of law. So a motion to enter into that uh, engagement letter. Second. So second. All in favor say aye. 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 Same sign. Okay, we now move to, for your information items, we have correspondence from Dorothy Lewis Kyler Foundation announcing a $2,000 grant award to the James W. Curry Library to be used towards the purchase of books, DVDs, CDs, and audio books for the children's circulation. And uh, I think that I know is on a, uh, there's effort on the part of the new librarian, relatively new librarian there, Judith Williams. Yes. And that's a well done uh, effort on her part. Uh, we next have correspondence from Judith Williams providing an update on October and November events at the James W. Curry Library. In correspondence from Jacob Rieger, prosecuting attorney, in response to West Virginia State Auditor's previous request for information. We have correspondence from the Hodgesville Public Service District appointing Robert Wright as a representative to the Source Water Protection Committee. We have correspondence from Tennyson Public Service District appointing John McGrew as representative on the Source Water Protection Committee. And we further have correspondence from Indian Public Service District appointing Eric Brunn as their, as their representative to the Source Water Protection Committee. Further, we have correspondence from Dominion Transmission Incorporated regarding the Atlantic Coast Pipeline pre-filing notification. A second round of open houses will be held in January 2015 if the location is referenced in the attachment. A review of that uh, communication indicates that uh, <coughs> there will be public hearings in Lewis and in, uh, let's see, Randolph County, I believe, as we've already had one earlier in Upshaw County. And it also will be in late January of 2015. We have Atlantic Coast Pipeline Project Overview. We have building permits for the month of November in, the, uh, in excess of, I believe, $600,000. Almost seven hundred thousand dollars in, in, uh, in building permit projects. Uh, we have the sheriff's financial statement for October 2014. 
in May for public prescription discount program for October 2014. And then we have the normal notice of agendas, meetings, meeting minutes, and the meetings scheduled for uh, January, this late December, and uh, appointments needed for upcoming boards. The next meeting of the Usher County Commission will be on December 11 from today. And the commission will hold interviews today at 3 and uh, 4 o'clock for the prosecuting attorney's position with uh, interested candidates. Is there anything else to be discussed? If not, we have some bills to pay. I have a question. Yes. And Dominion is in the newspaper. West Virginia is to gain $8 million from taxes or whatever. West Virginia? Or? Okay, go ahead. West Virginia is to gain so much. Virginia and South Carolina each are. How can they gain anything if the, ta if the taxes are already being paid by landowners? Is it going to be because of the enhancement of the gas going through that? At that I that is the case. Is that what it is? There's a tax on however they measure it, the, the gas going through the pipeline. We have some accrue some tax for the for the state, but also reflect on the county as well. I believe. I think it's a part of the coal severance tax. Yeah. And coal right. extraction. Yeah. That's why we were down, in simple explanation, that's why we were down the last couple of years, which reflected our tight budget last year, because reduction in, in the Marcellus gas and whatnot, the, the revenue was down, therefore the severance tax was down. But will, will that tax go to the state, or will it go to the counties that part it goes to? Part of it will go to the counties, I understand. So hopefully that will help our balance sheet in the years to come. But if it don't go through our county, would it help us? Severance tax, I don't know about the gas. I know that coal severance goes to all counties regardless where you have extraction in your own county. I don't know if that's the same for gas. Mr. Tenney, you might have knowledge on that from your experience. Well, the coal severance tax and the gas severance tax are part of it back to the county. So it'll help the state and the, the counties. And then also then the public utilities <coughs> tax <coughs> which is like covers a lot of things it's the transmission of, of utilities there will be some benefits to that too but and then there's also the benefit if you have a pipeline that's carrying gas out of the area then they're going to be drilling more wells that's going to generate more property tax so you know it's it's like it's like quarter age you quarter age finish then then it has a lot of positive economic benefits. The same way with that one. Uh, natural gas quarter H. And it's the opportunity for more gas to and, and you know that's that's the reason that you're seeing gasoline prices down. It's not anything the federal state government has done. It's because there's been more drilling of gas and oil production in the United States and we're not dependent on foreign oil. And so the price is dropping for the consumer. And not to get on a high horse here or anything, but it, what's interesting, and I read another article the other day, when they talk about inflation, when they determine what the inflation is, you know, and they say the inflation rate's pretty low, you know, there's two things they don't consider when they determine the inflation rate, gasoline and food. Now, what's your two biggest costs to a family? Number one is food. And if you travel, if you, if you travel much for this at all, your second greatest expense, and what's the thing that's raised the most over the, over the last few years? When you talk to farmers, which I'm glad that they're getting two dollar and a half, three dollar a pound out of their out of their livestock, and a year ago they were getting a dollar and a half, and a year before that they were getting a dollar. But you know, I was kind of shocked the other day when I saw a sale in sale in the one of the papers at one of the grocery stores, hamburgers on sale for four dollars a pound. <laughs> you know, but it it just kind of multiplies in a lot of different aspects. I wouldn't get paying our bills now. 